Witness history being made as Dallas Alexander sets a new record for the longest sniper shot ever recorded. Join us as we delve into the incredible skill and precision it took for this monumental achievement. Stay tuned to learn more about the man behind the shot, Dallas Alexander, and the details of this groundbreaking feat, snipers. Soldiers with a blessed ability to take down their enemy from distances that even the human eye cannot reach. The clearest evolution of gunpowder combined with 21st century technology and the great intelligence and patience of an elite soldier. For the first time, you are about to learn in detail the story of Dallas Alexander, one of the joint task force operators who made the longest confirmed kill shot in history, 3 fiber 540 meters. Yes, the one I've talked about in so many videos, but whose story and identity were unknown until now. I was truly amazed by how complex and incredible this story is, told by the Special Forces sniper who made the shot on February 6, 2023. Now retired and a country music singer, Alexander shared his story for the first time on the podcast of filmmaker and former CIA operator John Ryan, revealing his life, origins, training, and of course his legendary shot. Dallas Alexander grew up in Alberta, Canada, in a meter settlement, a small indigenous community with a population of about 400 people at the time. As a child, Dallas spent most of his time outdoors, playing in the woods and enjoying hockey, a quintessentially Canadian pastime that would become his absolute passion in the years to come. In his youth at the age of 23, Dallas was still playing hockey, hoping to become a professional and got a job in an oil field in Alberta. At that time, Dallas was somewhat lost and unsure of what he wanted to do with his life. However, at this job, he met someone who had served several years in the Canadian Army. This person told him amazing stories about a special forces unit, the Joint Task Force 2, JTF-2. At that moment, Dallas thought it was too incredible to be true, but he researched it online and was fascinated. He said to himself, that's what I want to do with my life. In 2005, Dallas Alexander went to a Canadian Army recruitment center. He was accepted, and that's where his military career began. Clearly, one does not go from being a civilian to a Special Forces soldier overnight. Before entering such a high-level Special Force, Dallas had to spend at least two years in a regular force. He chose the infantry branch of the Canadian Armed Forces and was sent to the 3rd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, based in Edmonton. During his time in this battalion, he got used to military life and began observing reconnaissance soldiers' training. They were tough and well-trained guys, and what caught his attention the most were the snipers. In 2008, Dallas got the opportunity to join the highly secretive and lethal Canadian Special Force. He recounts that before the selection, he had to undergo psychological and physical exams, and the recruiters evaluated what type of people they accepted based on their performance. Interestingly, candidates could come from any branch, and even military musicians or cooks could apply for the tough selection to become a member of the Joint Task Force. Dallas described the training this way. The Joint Selection is like a 24-7 psychological challenge. Different, just to see how you think, how you work in a team, how you work under pressure, and they test candidates with what they fear the most. Of the approximately 120 members in the selection, only about 30 candidates pass to the next phase. Dallas recounts that many candidates quit within the first few hours, which is impressive. Dallas passed the selection and was sent to the Special Operations Assault Course, which lasts about 10 months. Interestingly, part of it was conducted at the Blackwater Private Military Company's training facilities in the United States. The first stage consisted of mastering weaponry, with a month and a half entirely dedicated to shooting pistols, rifles, and more. After that, they took a two-month course on CQB, or Close Quarters Combat, which includes entering houses or buildings with a team, as well as a hostage rescue. The assault course also includes medical training, mixed martial arts classes, reconnaissance, survival and evasion, resistance and escape, and navigation. At the end of this assault course, only 16 candidates of the 30 who passed the selection could become official JTF-2 members, including Dallas Alexander. In late 2009, Dallas was assigned to the 2nd Assault Squadron, where he began to develop into a lethal, intelligent, and persevering soldier who, in the not-too-distant future, would accomplish what many snipers at the time deemed impossible. 
One of Dallas's first missions was in early 2010, when he and his team were assigned to provide security support for the Winter Olympics held in Canada that same year. He and his team were trained in MCC, meaning Maritime Counterterrorism. They also familiarized themselves with the area where the Olympics would be held, the train systems near Vancouver, and the different avenues of the city. If anything happened on land or at sea, the JTF-2 team would be ready to respond. But Dallas's first deployment to a war zone came in mid-2010, specifically in Afghanistan. His deployment lasted about nine months. Dallas mentions how impressive it was to see how different the world is in that region. He was involved in intelligence support tasks for the Canadian intelligence, reporting to their assets and providing security during their meetings. Dallas saw war up close for the first time and recalls the smell of a combat zone, which made him think, this is crazy, this is real life. And you might be wondering, how did Dallas become a sniper? Let's get into that. Dallas already had previous experience, having taken a sniper course with Canadian Army the Reconnaissance Groups. However, before his second deployment, now to Iraq, he took his first sniper course with JTF-2. Dallas describes it as something impressive and unlike anything he had ever seen. The technology, the weapons, the teaching, the philosophy, and the teamwork were on another level. Most of the training involved all aspects of being a sniper, measurements, movement, camouflage, long-range shooting, and a strong focus on hostage rescue. But the most vital part of his training, according to Dallas, was in Texas, specifically at an elite sniper academy called Accuracy International. Here, Dallas made his first super long-range shots, sometimes up to 2 km and even 2 6 km. It's worth noting that this distance is equivalent to three times the height of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, or the length of 14 football fields. His training in Texas was crucial before the story of the great shot, as it was here that he learned the essentials for a shot of such difficulty. Dallas was sent to a sniper squadron that would be deployed to Iraq in 2015. Dallas was near Al Anbar, a city partially controlled by ISIS, a well-known terrorist group. The main tasks of Dallas and his team were to conduct reconnaissance as snipers and call in airstrikes in those areas, which he describes as extremely successful. This deployment in Iraq lasted about five months. Back home and now with enough combat experience, Dallas Alexander and his squad were training for three-kilometer shots with success. Dallas mentions that for shots of 2.5 to 3 kilometers, you don't even aim directly at the target. The rifle has to be aimed basically at the sky. They used an advanced prism from TACOM HQ, which they mounted in front of their rifle scopes. This prism allowed them to have the necessary shooting angle for long distances and still see the target. During the training, Dallas promised his sergeant major and his team that in their next deployment to Iraq, they would break the record for the longest confirmed kill shot in history. At that time, the record belonged to British sniper Craig Harrison, who killed a Taliban fighter from two Vigilisa 475 meters away in 2009. Dallas's next deployment was to Iraq in 2017. They were trying to enter Mosul, a city held by ISIS. At some point during the deployment, one of his teammates spotted a nine-story building, the 9B Hotel, near a river on the eastern side of Mosul. Dallas and his team settled on the ninth floor of the hotel, while Iraqi resistance soldiers occupied the third and fourth floors. They spent 52 days in the hotel, studying the shot, the terrain, and every detail. On the 20th day of the operation, Dallas received information that they had captured an ISIS fighter who bragged about raping over 200 women, including girls. This information deeply impacted Dallas, who resolved to take out as many ISIS fighters as possible. During those 52 days, Dallas and his team made shots and measurements, calling in airstrikes on areas with ISIS fighters. On the second day of the Iraqi advance from northern Mosul, Dallas and his team were ready to shoot. When his teammate Josh fired, the bullet ricocheted and only injured a fighter in the leg at a distance of about 3 away 600 meters. Shortly after, Dallas and Scotty, the other sniper, saw some fighters at the corner of an alley. They fired simultaneously and killed a fighter at 3 440 meters. The media reported that a JTF-2 sniper broke the record, but it was actually a team of snipers working together. Unfortunately, the news of the record became public. 
and ISIS fighters located the building where Dallas and his team were, launching mortar attacks and gunfire, ending the team's tactical advantage. Dallas Alexander felt great frustration over his superior's decision to make the information public. In 2020, Dallas came into conflict with his superiors over the mandatory COVID-19 vaccine, ultimately deciding to leave JTF2. Besides being a lethal sniper, Dallas Alexander had a great passion for music and hockey. We invite you to share your opinion. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description.